Hello guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. Today we will go through the day 30 problem from August Lead Coding Channel, wherein we will discuss the solution to the problem largest component size by a common factor. Please like the video and if you are new, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss any update. Given a non empty array of unique positive integers, consider the following graph. There are a dot length nodes. There is an edge between a i and a j if and only if a i and a j share a common factor greater than 1. Return the size of the largest connected component in the graph. In the given sample examples, we see visually how the components are connected. As in the first example, we can see that all the values have at least one common factor, so the result becomes 4. In the second example, we see that 20 and 50 are connected where common factors are 2 and 5, while 9 and 63 is connected because common factor is 3. The largest connected component is of size 2 only. Let's see the third example in much more detail. These are the numbers given in the input. If we make a node for every number and then start connecting the values which share the factors, then the picture becomes a little clear. Starting with 2, we see that 2 is a common factor in 6, 4 and 12. Now we connect 3 and see it is the common in these many numbers. When we connect all the numbers with the common factor with each other, we get this graph. Well, it looks messy and as the number of the elements grow, it becomes more and more difficult to visualize. Let's break this process down. We'll start by writing all the prime factors for all the numbers. Now starting with 2, we see that it just has 2 as its prime factor. Moving to 12, we see it has 2 prime factors 2 and 3 and 39 has a prime factor 3 and 13. So we write the factors for all the numbers. Now what connection we can make out of it? If we focus just on the prime number 2 as factor, we can mark the numbers it appears in. We can say these numbers are connected. Now if we focus on the number which has more factors other than 2, we see that 2 and 3 have a relationship. So if we find all the numbers which has 3 as factor, then these numbers will also be connected with the existing numbers which have factor as 2. So we find for all the numbers with factor 3. And now these many numbers are connected with one another. Applying the same logic, we see that 3 and 7 is connected. So we connect all the numbers with existing graph. And now all the elements are connected. We can return the size of this graph, which is 8. The question that arises over here is how do we find the relationship between the numbers and their factors? The answer to this is a data structure called disjoint set or also called union find or merge find. You can see its key role in Kruskal's algorithm for finding the minimum spanning tree of a graph. This data structure has two operations. First is union, which takes two arguments and create a relationship between the provided numbers. Second is find, which takes one argument and finds the parent of the element. The data structure has an array where all the relationships are stored. We'll find the maximum number and have the array of the size equal to the number plus one. In this case, as maximum number is 12, the size of the array is 13. Initially, all the values will be equal to their indexes. Now comes the part to create the union between the numbers and their factors. We will achieve this by prime factorization. Using the brute force approach, we will find the prime factor of the numbers and then call the union method to create the relationship between the two. We will start looping on the input array and pick our first value. As 2 is a prime number and a factor of itself, there won't be any update in the array. Same will happen with 3. Now we come across 6. Like we discussed, we have to find all its prime factors as we know that the prime factor of a number exists between 2 and the square root of the number. We will loop on it and check for every number. If any time we find the factor, we will call the union method for 6 and the factor and then additionally we will call the union on 6 and 6 divided by the factor. Because there will exist a relationship between the number and the rest of the other factors too. We will be using this logic of union and find so it is better that you get yourself comfortable with it. It is a standard logic that we have used here. For more clarity let's add index to all the values. We will be updating the value at index 6. So, we will start looping from 2 to square root of 6. As 2 is a factor, we need to create the union between 6 and 2. Inside union, we will call the find method for both x and y and update the value at parent of x, 
with the value at parent of y. So in this case, the value at index 6 becomes 2. This creates a relationship between the two. In second statement, we create relationship between 6 and 6 by 2, which is 3. Now the parent of 6 is 2. So the value needs to be updated at index 2 and the parent of 3 is 3. So the value at index 2 becomes 3. Moving on with the prime factorization, we get 3 as a factor, which means we need to create a relationship between 6 and 3 and also between 6 and 2. Both of these relationships are already there and hence there is no change in the array. When highlighting these three values that we change in this iteration for 6, we see that we have created a relationship between 2, 3 and 6. Starting from 6, its parent is 2 and the parent of 2 is 3. After applying the same logic for all the elements, the array will look like this. Now we need to find the size of the connected graph. We will use a hash map for it. Here we will store the factors and the number of time it is the parent of the elements. We will start with the first element and find its parent by calling method find on the element. As parent of 2 is 3, we put 3 as key and 1 as value. Moving forward, we find parent of 3, which is 3 itself and increment the value against t3. Parent of 6 is also 3, so we increment its value. Parent of 7 is 7 itself, so we put 7 in the map. For 4, we increment the parent 3 value to 4. Lastly, for 12, we increment 3 again. It completes a loop and now we return the maximum value in the map, which signifies that there are 5 elements connected to each other through one or more common factors. Summarizing our steps, we will first find the maximum element in the input array and initialize our custom disjoint set with it. We then loop on the input array and for every prime factor, we will create two unions. First between the number and the factor, second between the number and the remaining factors. We then initialize our hash map and our result variable too. For every value, we find its parent by calling the find method of the disjoint set. We put value in the map and if already exists, then increment the value against the parent key. Also, we keep track of the maximum value in the result and at the end, we return result. Here is the actual code snippet. You can also find the link to the code in the description below. Thanks for watching the video. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comment section what you think about the video. See you in the